Hello everyone, Ben from Back Photography here, back with another video, so thank you very much for joining me once again. If you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content you're about to see, and if you've been here before and you're joining me once again, now is the time to subscribe. Today we're going to be talking all about lighting, we're going to be talking about how to set up your lighting, how to get the most aesthetically pleasing lighting in your photo shoots, and then we're going to go directly into this photo shoot and we're going to see exactly how I lit this scene and how we can get beautiful light and beautiful natural light for your portraits. Now in this photo shoot, we're not going to be talking too much about equipment. We will touch on it a little bit just for context, but for this video we're going to be focusing really just on the lighting, which I think is the second most important part of photography, just after composition. So to get it out of the way, I'm shooting on a Sony A7R2 camera body, which is a mirrorless camera, and coupled with that camera is a Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens, and for pretty much all of this photo shoot, I was shooting at the lowest aperture of f1.4. And there's an endless world of lighting equipment that you can use in your photo shoots, but to keep this tutorial super, super simple, we're actually not gonna be using any equipment, we're not gonna be using any off-camera flash, no LEDs, we're not even gonna be using any reflectors, anything like that. This is gonna be purely using natural light at a thoughtful time and putting the natural light in a thoughtful position to get the most out of the light that we can. So let's talk a little bit about that now. When you're shooting in natural light, you want to make sure that the placement of your light is exactly where you want it to be because this is gonna be the most important part of the uh, lighting composition that you have in your image. You're not gonna have the flexibility that you might have when you're setting up lots of off-camera flashes, you're using reflectors to bounce the light in the areas you want. Um, you're not gonna have all that flexibility. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've placed all of the things that you have control of in your scene in the right areas. So making sure that your model is in the right area and they're also facing the right way and you're also shooting in the direction that you want to um, relative to the light source. So in this particular example, what we're going for is backlight and we're shooting at golden hour. So we're shooting where the sun, which is our main light source, is gonna be at the lowest position it can be in the sky uh, while it's still bright and we have plenty of light in our scene. And what that's doing is it's meaning that our scene is gonna be well lit and there's not gonna be any really harsh shadows or harsh highlights in our scene. So the lower the sun is in the sky, the less harsh highlights and the less harsh shadows there are gonna be in the scene as well. And that's gonna be really good for portraits because ideally we want to have portraits where the skin tones of our model are nice and smooth. And we don't wanna have any really harsh highlights or shadows on their skin or on their person because that's gonna be distracting. It also means that when we have a really soft light, we're not gonna lose any details when we try to flatten everything out. Um, so we're preserving details and it's gonna be easier to edit in post-production. So now let's have a look at a few photos and dissect one of them and talk a little bit about the lighting in the scene and how we achieved the lighting conditions in the photo. Alright, so let me know which one you think is the best one and I'm going to leave a link to all of these raw files in the description of this video as well if you'd like to edit them in your own time or if you'd like to edit them with me while I edit them in the end of this video. So here is the photo that we're going to be focusing on in particular. I think it's probably my favorite of the set and I really like how the sun is backlighting Rhiannon here and we can see all of that beautiful golden light coming through her hair and also coming through on her red dress just at the back of her body as well. So you can see in this photo that I'm actually using Rhiannon's body to hide the sun behind her and that is so that we don't lose any contrast in the image from having a direct light shooting straight onto the camera sensor because essentially if you're shooting directly into a light source, particularly at lower apertures like f1.4, f1.8, something like that, you're gonna lose a lot of detail in the image because of the lack of contrast in your photo. Because basically what happens is your camera notices that there's a lot of dynamic range going on in your photo, as in there's a lot of really bright lights and then harsh shadows in comparison. 
and it tries to flatten out the image by reducing contrast as much as possible uh, to reserve some of those details. But what happens is it means that your photo is going to be super low contrast and not look particularly appealing to the eyes. So when we use Rhiannon here to shield that light, we're still getting all that beautiful rim light and really nice golden light from the sun, but we're getting a lot of really high contrast color in the image as well because we're not shooting directly into the sun. Another effect we're having of shooting uh, backlit light in this situation is we're kind of um, giving Rhiannon here a halo effect which draws focus uh, to her as the subject of the photo. So when you're shooting backlit portraits, uh, that's really good for bringing focus to your subject because they're going to be illuminated all around themselves with light. So let's talk about one final thing in terms of lighting before we hop into Photoshop and have a look at how we edited this photo to get the perfect lighting set up in our photo. Photo. One last thing we did was we made sure that things that were in the foreground were in the shadow and basically everything in the scene was in the shadow and the reason for that is we're going to get a really nice consistent lighting pattern throughout the whole scene if we shoot in shade. Shooting in shade is a really safe bet for lighting conditions, particularly if you're shooting in the middle of the day or something like that, where the sun is going to be super high in the sky. Because when the sun is really high in the sky, um, it's going to be shining on things and giving them really harsh highlights where the light's hitting them, and then really harsh shadows where the light isn't hitting. And that is going to add a large amount of contrast and almost certainly more contrast than you'd like in certain areas and harsher shadows and harsher highlights. So because everything here is in shade, we are able to get a really nice soft light and we can get lots of details everywhere in the background. And it's gonna give us a lot of ease of fl and flexibility in post-production when we jump into Photoshop in a second. So now let's jump into Photoshop and see how I edited this photo to get this beautiful light to really pop from the scene. But before I do that, let me just tell you about my coaching service that we only have a few spots left for, uh, for photographers who are looking to make their photography into a business or maybe even have a business already and are just looking to uh, make it more profitable, more successful and really just take it to the next level. So I'm offering a one-on-one -on -one coaching service to a select number of photographers who are looking uh, for this service. It's going to be one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. So me and you sitting down together and working out exactly how we can take your business to the next stage, how we can get it profitable, how we can get you all the clients that you'd ever need, uh, how to price yourself properly, how to brand yourself, how to make your website look beautiful, all the things you need to run a successful business. I've been running my successful business now for about five years in photography, and it's really at the stage now where I just wanna give back to other photographers and help them improve their business and get it to where they wanna be. So there's only a few spots left available for this at the moment. Uh, the link is gonna be in the description if you're interested. So check that out if you're interested. And now let's jump into Photoshop and have a edit of this image. Okay, so I'm gonna talk through the entire editing process purely because I think that it will add context to the entire video um, instead of just the lighting stuff. So let's have a look uh, from start to finish what we did. We added some clarity to the entire image and then we dropped the highlights all the way so we could get some details back in the sky. Then we messed around with the shadows, the whites and the blacks, just so we could get a nice amount of contrast. We could see all of the colors correctly. Uh, nothing was too dark and nothing was too bright. So we also messed with the exposure as well. The next thing we did is we messed around with the color sliders just to add a little bit more blue back into the sky, but also to add some to the rocks as well because a orange and blue uh, complementary color scheme is always a really nice color scheme, nice and cinematic in any scene. So now again, we're just messing around with the shadow slider just so we can get a nice skin tone and also see lots of nice colors in this photo. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just get the brush tool and then uh, drop the blacks and exposure all the way down so we can see exactly where we're selecting. And we're just gonna smooth the skin uh, with a drop in clarity, but also we're gonna do a new technique where we drop the sharpness as well. And basically that just gets rid of any of the details that we would see in the skin, any blemishes like that, because we had been walking on rocks all day. So Rhiannon had got a couple of little bruises and scratches uh, on her legs. So we're just making a selection of the legs here, basically just so that we can uh, smooth the skin and make the skin look nice and smooth. And you have to be quite careful not to go over any contrasting lines. Um, so the lines of the legs, that kind of thing, just so, um, just so you can maintain sharpness in the areas that you wanna keep sharp. So you notice here that I'm not going over any of the um, edges of our arms or legs. And that's purely so we don't get this weird sort of soft look to the image. We're just blurring the parts of the body um, that we want to make 
blurry. We don't want to blur out any of the hard lines, any of the edges of her body. So that includes arms, where the dress starts, that kind of thing. The same thing goes with the face as well. We want to make it so all of her cheeks, her chin, uh, the top of her nose and her forehead are nice and smooth, but we don't want to smooth the lips. We don't want to uh, smooth the eyes, uh, the nostrils or the jawline either. So we're just making a selection of all the areas here that we'd like to make nice and smooth. And then once we've actually made the selection that we'd like, we're going to remove the exposure. We're going to remove all that black change. And then we're going to just keep the clarity down low so that we can smooth the skin that way and also keep the sharpness low as well. So you can see here the difference when you add and remove clarity from the skin. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything we're going to do in camera roll. We're just going to do a couple of little things um, extra. We're going to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of uh, whites and shadows just to make um, the hair pop a little bit more and look more contrasty. So adding whites and blacks at the same time basically means that the highlights are going to be more bright and the shadows are going to look a bit darker as well. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit more clarity into the eyes because with a portrait, the most important part of a portrait is the face and the most important part of the face is the eyes. The eyes are always going to be the thing that you're drawn to in a portrait. They're going to be the first thing that you see. Making them a little bit brighter and sharper always helps. So finally, we're just going to make that dress look really nice and red by adding a whole bunch of red to the scene. And then we're also just going to boost the yellows up a little bit just to make that lighting even more warm um, and summery feeling. And then just messing around with the color balance a little bit and that's everything in camera raw. So now let's jump into the native part of Photoshop and we're just gonna use the patch tool now to remove any blemishes or scratches that Rhiannon has on her skin. Now I'm just gonna fast forward to this bit because uh, it gets a little bit boring and just in the interest of time so you're not here watching me retouch skin for 10 minutes, we're just going to fast forward this bit. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. So that's it for skin smoothing. These are all very little changes, but added up make a big difference. So now we're gonna to go to the filter and then liquify tool. And we're just gonna pull out the hair a little bit, make it look a little bit more voluminous um, and a little bit more fluffy as well. And um, I've always found that adding a little bit more volume to hair always makes someone look much healthier, much more beautiful. Um, it just overall helps to the portrait in a big way. So one final thing, because we were shooting on a wide angle lens here and Rhiannon's feet are right in the bottom corner of the image, they have gotten a bit distorted. So we're just gonna use the liquify tool uh, just to stretch them back in and make them look a little bit less distorted than they were uh, before. So just pulling them back in with the liquify tool, making sure not to do it too much or it'll look strange. So that's everything for this photo. I really hope that you like it. Looking forward to all of your edits as well. And if you didn't edit along, there's gonna be a link in the description to all the raw files from this photo shoot. If you'd like to edit them in your own time, or if you'd like to send them to me on Instagram, I'm always interested in seeing how you guys edit your, um, my photos or even your photos. It always gives me a lot of inspiration and I can see how people do things differently and learn from you. So that's awesome. And that's everything for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed um, this video and I hope that you learned something interesting about lighting. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in that coaching program I was talking about earlier, where we have a one-on-one -on -one and discuss how you can improve your photography business, link is gonna be in the description. So that is everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching once again and I will see you in the next one.